Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to do a tour of all of my vegetable garden beds. Now I've already done a tour on my front yard and the drought tolerant plants I've used for season long color. We've done a food forest tour and showed you all of the fruit, you know, the berries and the fruit trees that I'm growing. So now we're going to give you a tour of the vegetable garden beds. Yeah, I've showed you a little bit about what is going on before and if you look through the videos on my channel I'm sure that you'll find some of those videos. But today is the end of June and we're going to show you what everything looks like right now. Now there's a little bit of you know backstory on on the weather because the weather is affecting everybody. It's been kind of a weird weather year. We had a very long very cool spring which I am not complaining about. It's been wonderful weather and I really enjoy that. The only issue is we've had almost no rain in my area. My area tends, my area is surrounded by mountains and it either gets hit really hard or it gets completely skipped and this year we've been skipped. I think, you know, like I said, this is near the end of June and we've only had two rain, rainstorms that actually did any soaking into the ground. You know, other areas in Utah have had a little bit more rain but we've really had almost none. So it's been a very dry year. And I've been trying to mitigate that because we're in a heavy drought and reduce my watering a little bit. In the past, I've either had to water my garden beds every day or I've had to water them three times a week. But right now, I am actually at watering them two times a week. So we'll go over what I've been doing with that and we'll show you the progress of the vegetables. Now also, this is the time of year where we're changing over from spring vegetables to summer vegetables and also starting to think about fall vegetables. So we're gonna go into that too. So let's go look at the garden beds. Now if you watch my channel regularly, this spot and this, these clothes will look a little bit familiar. It's because the last video that I just did five minutes ago was talking about my sweet potatoes. So we're not going to cover my sweet potatoes really in depth right now because we did that in the last video and I will link that up above. But we will show you that just in case you don't like to go through past videos, just a little bit. And then we're going to show you this bed. Now these are my Vajega raised metal beds and I absolutely love them. Love them so much that I became an affiliate and I'll put links down below where you can get a discount and where you can look at them and see what they're all about. But these beds are filled with wood at the bottom and then raised bed mix, peat moss, compost, vermiculite at the top. And then we have heavily mulched. This year is the first year I've used straw and I don't think I'm going to ever go back to not using straw. I think the straw has been the game changer in how often I water. These beds really only get, get watered about twice a week and they really hold water well. So in this bed right here, well, let's start with this bed first because it's gonna be the quickest one because we've already gone over this in another video. But these are my sweet potatoes. I have three varieties. I stuck them out here straight from receiving them in the mail and most of them died all the way back. But now we're starting to see regrowth on most of them, all but one. So if you look at the video that's linked above, that will talk about the varieties that, in here, that are in here. And I just really don't wanna cover that again. So definitely go look at that video. Now I will link the video above about this bed when, you know, when I planted it. These are my tomatoes. We also have some naked bear pepita squash. And I figure we can just let these spill over the edge and fill up this entire area. This one right here is not doing as well because uh, we had some overspray from another sprinkler that I had to get adjusted. And that sprinkler was hitting this bed too often. So we got that adjusted. These are the ones that have only been watered twice a week because the sprinkler was not reaching over to this area and they're doing quite well. So I'm excited to try this squash and we'll see what it's like. We'll see if we get a lot of seeds from it. I use a lot of pepita, pepita seeds with my new diet and we're already starting to see little flower buds down there. Now the one issue we have Well, we've got a little worm right there. You can see this little guy. I'm gonna get rid of him. But the one issue I have really had and that I'm watching really carefully for right now is squash bugs. I haven't seen any yet this year, 
but as soon as I start seeing them, I am going to start spraying seven. I know a lot of people are against spraying chemicals, but I have been unable to grow squash for the past 10 years because of squash bugs. And it took 10 years for me to decide to finally try a uh, liquid seven. And it's the seven with carbaryl is the main ingredient. It was a game changer. I got so much squash last year, I'm still eating it. And it's actually still good. My butternut squash is still good. And this is June. So as soon as I start seeing any signs of squash bugs, I may even start as a pre-spray, I don't know. But as soon as I start seeing them for sure, we're gonna start spraying my squash. Now the next thing is my tomatoes, and they are really starting to take off. These tomatoes were in their pots a little long. They were a little tall and lanky when I stuck them in this bed. We're also trellising them on single poles and we're taking off all of the side shoots. So this is a little side shoot. This is a little smaller than when I usually take it off, but since we're here, here's another one. We take off the side shoots and we're just letting them grow up as a single stem. Now, most of these are San Marzano's. This is my favorite sun gold. We've got another sun gold on this side. And then this one is an Amana orange. So we have four San Marzano's for paste, and then we've got our cherry tomatoes and our Amana orange. And we've already got one little sun gold. Now the rest of these, you know, it got in the 90s right after I planted these. So I think that aborted some of the flowers. But we're back down a little tiny bit cooler, and I think we're gonna start developing fruit. Got another one there. The mono orange has big flowers. So we'll see if we can start developing some fruit here. It's looking good. Got some zinnias, some little lily put zinnias in here. And we're trying to get at least a few flowers in each garden bed and we're really late this year. Next year, we're definitely gonna do a lot better. Now here we are in the second newest part of my vegetable garden beds. We have my block raised beds that I put in last year. We have my round vajega bed that I put in early this spring and let me show you what's in these beds. Let's start with this round vajega bed. Now this one has a wood chip mulch at the bottom and then the same mix of potting soil and vermiculite, peat moss, and uh, compost. It's been growing really well. We've got these also mulched with straw. And this is the first time for me growing Jer Jerusalem artichokes. Now this bed, you know, probably starting next year, will com be completely full and completely dedicated to Jerusalem artichokes. I wanted to put them in an area where they could have a good size to fill out and I could get a good harvest, but that would absolutely contain them because I've heard they're quite invasive and hard to get rid of once, you know, if you plant them in ground. Now these are gonna have big, beautiful yellow flowers. They're gonna get really tall. So I think it would also be a really pretty centerpiece for this area. But while these are growing, I have put nasturtiums in the, on the sides. So we've got nasturtiums on both sides, kind of to make it pretty. Grew those by seed, you know, just uh, planted those by seed, and it's taken them a while to get started. I think it's the cool weather. We also have a zucchini. I think the, I can't, I'll put the name on the screen, but it's a Romanesco. And this is looking really good. There's no sign of borers yet, and no sign of squash bugs. We've got one baby flower in there. This is just your regular crookneck squash. So we've got a yellow squash and a zucchini, green zucchini squash. We have also have one of my roselle plants that was planted from a seed that I grew from a plant that I was growing indoors, and I'll link those videos above. But this is looking really well. It's growing beautifully. We also have two more. So I had three of my seedlings survive. There's one way over there. In front of these block beds, I planted some, some sorrel. This one is actually starting to go to seed. We'll just snap that off down at the base and just let them continue to produce leaves. These were all started by seed and planted this spring and are doing really well got some nasturtiums and some calendulas. And this back here 
is where I planted my lettuce. This gets shade till about 3 p.m. Well, maybe, yeah, 2 or 3 p.m. And then I'm hoping the tomatoes will give them shade, you know, later as they fill out, later in the day also as they fill out. So I'm hoping we can get lettuce growing back there without it bolting. Up in front, in this bed, we have my paprika peppers and we're getting production. These peppers were started in my, in my grow room inside in March, you know, the, like the second week in March. And they started producing inside. We couldn't plant these out until, you know, about three or four weeks ago. And I didn't know how they would do, but they're doing beautifully. We're getting new peppers growing. And I think these will be great. We've also got some self-seeded borage from last year. And then we've got my favorite black seaman tomato. Absolutely love it. This one is a jet star. This one's called mushroom. It replaced another jet star that died. So, you know, this mushroom is a little bit behind everybody. And then another jet star. We're getting we're getting flowers, no tomatoes on the jet stars yet, but look at this. My black seaman is going to give me a tomato first. This is going to be my first producer. Over in this bed, we have more peppers and tomatoes. Now we'll start with my favorite. I'm not normally a sweet pepper lover or any pepper lover, but as you can see, I'm, I'm planting a lot of them. For somebody who doesn't love peppers. This one's an orange pepper and it's called Doe Hill. It's just a small orange bell and it's the sweetest least bitter pepper I've ever tasted and I absolutely love it. These were also grown indoors, started way too early. We're producing indoors. I've already harvested one indoors and love it. And look at the protection started on this, starting on this one. I think they're going to do really well. This is another one that's producing. This is called Antohi, and you can harvest them when they're yellow or red. And we're getting some good production off of these also. So we've got peppers coming here. I'm really excited about that. And these are just your basic California Wonder Bells. And we're already getting production off of these. So my peppers, despite my greatest fears of them not producing once they came outside after being in pots for so long, they were in gallon pots and were really tall. They are doing well and I'm excited. Over here we have seven more tomatoes growing as on a single stem. This is another mushroom right here. This one's a pineapple. We've got another pineapple. And then since black seamen are my favorite, we've got two more black seamen. This is a Dr. White cheese. Now the Dr. White cheese on this side, I missed one of their stems. So I think I'm just going to tie that stem also and let it continue to grow. Um, we'll see how well this one does. And then we've got a Kentucky beefsteak. Also, I just noticed we have a stem that I missed that's starting to grow tomatoes down below. But I'm hoping that we'll start seeing tomatoes soon off of these. I started some basil by seed and when I planted it, it burned up and looked horrible. But now it's starting to fill in and look so much better. So we're going to have a good crop of basil. I usually just went when I prune the flowers off these, I just dry them and I have dried basil for the year, just off three plants usually. Then we've got some little calendulas and my perennial green onions. These are plants that I got from my mother-in-law who passed away last year and I'm really excited that they're just living. They're not looking great, but they taste really good and this time of year they just kind of look like this. Now we're here in the oldest part of my garden. This is the very first thing I did when I first moved into this house in 2005. So I don't know how many years that is. That's a lot of time. Now the very first thing I did when I moved in was look for a place to put my garden beds. And I looked down below, we had a lot of grass, but I really kind of wanted to leave that as grass because I had three dogs and three kids and they needed as much grass as possible. 
So I looked at this hill and I thought, what can I do with this hill? We don't need grass on the hill. I didn't want to mow it. I was a single mom. You know, I was working. It was like, what was I going to do? I didn't want to mow. But putting garden beds on a hill was going to be really hard because the water just flows down. So I came up with the idea of using these blocks and digging down one side and putting them in in a terraced fashion. And it has worked beautifully. It's worked beautifully for the entire time that I've had this. Never had to replace these beds. The only thing I think I'm gonna do is probably stack another layer of blocks on top so they're a little bit taller. But that's not necessary, so it hasn't happened yet. These have worked really well for me. They're all on drip irrigation. As soon as I finished my yard in 2000, Actually, it wasn't 2005. It was 2007 when I moved here. It was 2005 when I filed for divorce, 2007 when I moved into this house. So the very first thing that I did was put in the garden beds. Second thing I did is I had a guy come in and redo all of my irrigation, paid a ton of money, had it all completely redone, and he added drip irrigation to these beds. So they've always been drip irrigated. And I'm going to do another video a bit, little bit later in this year about how I'm going to change up the drip irrigation. Each of these beds only has three lines and it's just not quite enough. I end up needing to hand water about once a week. So let's go, go over what are in these beds and I'll talk to you about the changes that are gonna come because it is the time to change up between spring and summer crops and it's also time to start thinking about fall crops. Now the first thing I wanna say about this area is it may look a little bit messy, but all of this is on purpose. I do not have to use bug spray up here. The only thing that I spray for bugs is my uh, squash, and that has just been a problem. The other thing that I probably need to start spraying earlier in the year is my raspberries, because my raspberries are suffering with spider mites and they're suffering with a uh, raspberry cane borer, and it's just taking them out. Um, they're also probably getting too much sun, so I need to figure out what to do about my raspberries they're just not working out well here. But anyway, we're not talking about raspberries, we're talking about vegetables. My first garden bed is my strawberries. Now I think at the end of the year I'm going to pull all of these strawberries out. These are Fort Laramie. These have been in this bed for two years. They did give me a really small crop this spring and I'm not seeing any flowers on them again and they have not produced, they really have not produced that many strawberries. So I need to find a variety that's going to produce a little heavier. One that I am trying right here with those pretty red flowers is the buried treasure strawberries. And we're starting to get strawberries on those. They look like they're gonna be good. We'll see how they taste. I threw one of my stevias in here just because there was room. And this is a self-seeded ground cherry. We let cilantro go to seed and dill go to seed. We've got self-seeded calendulas, and all of these, all of these flowers have a purpose for being here, and that's to draw in beneficial insects. Let me show you a video I took a little bit earlier of all the insects that are surrounding my uh, coriander flowers. They're, you know, you can't see them right now because every time I try to get near, they seem to move, but I did get some good video earlier. But all of these flowers, including a lissom that I plant all over the rest of my yard, draws in beneficial insects. And I think that reduces all of my bad insect problems because I don't really have that many issues here. So let's go over what are in the beds. So this is a hodgepodge bed. We've got another zucchini and a crookneck squash. This gets a lot more sun than it does down in the other area where I put the squash. And so these tend to wilt during the day. They were watered yesterday, so they're not drought stricken. They're just wilting because it's just hot. We have some more of my perennial green onions. We've got some reseeded lettuce that is still doing well. These started growing in March and this is what they look like. I've been using them and they're not bitter yet. So this is the green seeded Simpson that's reseeded itself for about 10 years and I love it. This plot had my peas in it before and I just recently tore those out. So that's why it's kind of empty. We put in some jalapeno peppers that I grew by seed and these are just not doing as well. So I bought three more and put those in here and hopefully they'll start doing better. Got another stevia. Got some carrots that just seeded themselves in here. 
And then we've got another sun sugar tomato or a sun gold tomato. And we're getting more tomatoes on this vine than the other ones. These are my banana peppers that I didn't think were gonna make it, but they are starting to pull through. When I thought they were not going to make it, I actually bought some more. So here's a new little baby. We're getting new growth along the stems of these. We're starting to get production again. We've got a Thai basil. And then this is an interesting one right here. This is an orange hat tomato that I grew all winter. I planted this December 12th, grew it inside in a one gallon pot and just, I was gonna either get rid of it or plant it outside. So I planted it outside and it's, the leaves have turned almost black because they don't like the sun out here. But it was either gonna be throwing them away or planting them out here and we're just gonna see how they do. We've got little flowers starting again. This one has tomatoes that were ripening from inside. And they were just a fantastic plant to grow indoors over the winter. And I'm going to be doing that again this year. But the, as I said, you know, look at the production on my banana peppers. They seem to be doing just fine. Got more lettuce growing, you know, that have reseeded itself. This largest one I'm going to let flower and that will be, provide the seed for next year. You know, it just reseeds itself and comes back every year and I love it. Got a little baby calendula over there. And the calendulas just recede themselves between all the garden beds. I think these areas might get a little bit of runoff out of the garden beds and they seem happy right there. This is the last of my spring crops. We've got some cabbage that are just about ready to be harvested. They're not huge. I'm not sure what was going on this year, but this is a firm head. It's absolutely ready to be harvested. More lettuce chives that I cut the flowers back so it doesn't reseed itself. A kohlrabi that's ready to be harvested. It's looking really cute. Some kale that didn't like this area very much. And then these are some experimental garlic that I'm growing for a friend. We've got them all labeled and these are going to take a little bit longer than those before they're ready to harvest. So we're just going to let these go a little bit longer. This right here is a Swiss chard, a red leaf Swiss chard that overwintered. It, when Swiss chard gets hit by cold weather, it will bolt, bolt the next spring. And I'm, keep, I'm gonna save the seeds off of this one since it survived the entire winter completely uncovered. There was no coverage on it at all. Right here we have a little salad brunette that for some reason is not as big as they used to be. You know, it's not growing as healthy as it has been. It might be that there's just been absolutely no rain and the twice a week is not enough water for it. Here's my little coriander. I don't know if you could see all the little bees on it and the little you know, beneficial insects that are all over it. It's starting to develop its seeds and this is what I grow coriander for. I use the seeds in cooking. I don't like the leaves, but I love the seeds. So it's a dual purpose plant. It brings in the pollinators. It's pretty and I can harvest the seeds. I've got my thyme that I never remember to cut back and I'm going to try and remember to cut it back this fall. And it's reseeded itself again. This is one that seeded itself. So we're just, we're going to have to cut this back and see if we can get it restarted. This is all my garlic. I'll do a harvest video on it later, but in the meantime, I will link up at the top a video that I've done in the past on garlic harvesting. But this is gonna be a good harvest this year. I think they're gonna be a really good size. Up here is a bed that's ready to be changed out. I'm gonna put carrots and beets in this one. I'll put a shade cloth over the top, cover the seedlings with, with something, you know, either a board or paper or something that will shade them out and keep them moist while they sprout and then this will be my uh, fall and winter harvest of carrots. What was in here as you can see all of the cilantro and the dill we've got parsley going to seed which is I let that go as a seed for the same reason as everything else it reseeds itself and I don't ever have to plant it and the beneficial insects love it. I've got a regular for the same reason it'll reseed itself and the beneficials love it. But in here used to be all of my cauliflower. It did pretty well. 
We've got two little babies that never formed heads. I think it's too hot for that. You can see this one right here. It did not form a big head. We're going to have to pull that out and compost it. But as I said, this will be beets and carrots, and then we'll see what else we'll put in here. This is my onion bed. I wanted to see if they would do better in the shade, but they're not even starting to bulb up. This is the end of June. It's going to be a late harvest on these. We've got a red onion. We've got a, some yellow and white Spanish sweet onions. We'll just wait and see how long it takes them to, to mature. This is my tarragon. It's in the shade, so it seems a little wimpy. I may move that, but it overwintered and is doing well. Put a little bit of lettuce down here since it's in the shade. Some on the end over there. And then this is a, I'm not sure what variety of kale this is, but this is a kale that I grew in a pot in my house over the winter and harvest off, harvested off. And it's doing really well. So I think because it didn't freeze over the winter, it's not bolting at all. And then the very last thing I'm going to show you is my really interesting Chinese mountain yams. Now, I planted these last year. They grew a bunch of vines. I was waiting for them to grow the little potatoes in between each node, because in between each node, you're supposed to get little potatoes. And it didn't do that last year. So I left it in the ground. We're starting to get growth in between. And then there's a little bud right here. I don't know if you can see that little bud. We're gonna see if that turns into a little potato. But you can harvest those and then you can harvest the potatoes that are under the ground. Um, I think in Japan they're called nagaimo, and they're kind of slimy, you know, mucilaginous is a word they use about them. But we'll see how they taste. We'll harvest those in the fall and see what, see what happens with these, see if these are worth growing again. So that is the end of my garden bed tour and I've been really excited. Last year I made the decision that I needed to change my eating habits. I was having some chronic health issues and I decided to see how much of what I eat I could grow. And so far, all of my vegetables and fruits, other than broccoli, I don't grow broccoli because I just haven't ever been able to make that succeed. But other than broccoli, I really do not buy vegetables at the grocery store. It's greatly reduced my grocery bill. I've been able to preserve stuff that has lasted over the winter, grow stuff inside over the winter, and then you know just have a bountiful harvest in the spring and summer. So I'm excited to see how we can improve this, increase my harvest, maybe get enough to share with others, and, and just see how it goes. And I'd love to hear what you're doing. Are you harvesting enough food to feed your family? If not, are there ways that you can improve it and grow more food? Because it is such a fun thing to do and it is so much healthier than buying things at the store. So if you like my videos, if they've been helpful for, for you, I hope you like and subscribe, share them with your friends and go have a wonderful garden adventure.